the 14th station of the cross, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from St. Mark's Gospel. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that he had had hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Maudlin and Mary, the mother of Joses, stood where the body was laid. All wisdom issues from a hole in the earth, wrote Kathleen Rain in her poem, The Pythoness. The weightiness and sorrow of this final station can never quite stifle the fact that though humanity has allowed God to be buried in a hole in the earth, there is to be a great issuing forth, that this bloody road to Calvary and beyond to the tomb has redeemed us and itself transfigured, invites us on a new journey, a new way of going about life. It's perhaps a strange admission for this saddest of stations, but I like graveyards. Early signs of this saw me taking walks to the village graveyard, looking for family graves, interesting monuments, graves with stories. It helped also that it was a beautiful spot surrounded by fields, home to wild flowers and ancient yew trees, and filled with bird song. No city break is complete for me without a tour of its dead. Père Lachaise or Montparnasse in Paris, Brooklyn's Greenwood, the Capuchin catacombs in Palermo, or our very own atmospheric Highgate Cemetery. For some, graveyards represent dark places, places of shadow and superstition, of gothic intrigue, of melancholy or morosity. For us all during our lives, they will become places of sadness, reminding us of grief and loss. Places which, for some people, can indeed become a morbid fascination, but for many others, something to avoid, at least whilst we can. Often on the edge of cities, frequently overgrown, they're places that perhaps for much of our lives we can try to forget or put to one side. But amongst the tombs, we can, I think, learn a lot about ourselves. Lots of it isn't, of course, very good. Cemeteries speak too often of the inequality that is still endemic in live human society. They can be places of astonishing vulgarity, full of the most basic cliches. They embody pretentiousness and fear, defensiveness, their inscriptions can be reductive of human lives and relationships. And yes, of course, ultimately they speak of death and therefore of sin. They can too be places of great beauty. The older they are, the more likely they have become places of life, havens for the wildlife that humanity has pushed to the edges of its cities, reserves of the quiet and of the prayer that are pushed to the edges of our hearts. Places which speak of human tenderness, fortitude and courage, faithfulness and memory, of human achievement and humility, friendship and family, both local and in broader human terms. Places where those wronged or misunderstood in life are given honor. Places where we come to remember our dearest and our best. Memento Mori speak of a time when we were perhaps a little more realistic about what it is to be mortal. Significant then that this vindicating drama of our faith should take place in a graveyard. Significant that the glory of our Lord is never more apparent than when his son lies dead this holy Saturday on a grave slab. Significant too, that of all the places that Jesus laid his head in his lifetime, the lowly manger in Bethlehem, no crib for his bed, the tents and temporary homes of exile in Egypt, 
that little humble house at Nazareth, the denless, nestless roots of his ministry in Galilee. It is only this one, the tomb, that makes any pretense to human grandeur, hewn expensively from the rock by Joseph of Arimathea. The nativity and crucifixion made icons of rude and simple wooden constructions. But the grave in which Jesus was laid and from which he emerged, having conquered death out of love for us, is solid and imposing. He hath raised the lowly and scattered the proud, just as the cross is exalted, that forbidding and solid and final tomb will be made low. Lord, teach us ever to measure our joy with compassion and our grief with the knowledge of your love for us and the joy to come. Teach us more about ourselves and our world that we may draw ever closer to the plans that you have for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.